Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome to Goblin Stone, a turn-based role-playing game where we take control of a little group of goblins who just want to live a happy goblin life, but they can't do that because they're constantly being hunted down and killed by pesky adventurers in search of loot and XP and other goodies. So we have to help our new goblin friends build a new home under the ground, we train them for combat, we go on adventures with them and learn new things, and there's a proper story going on. There are fully narrated chapters to the game, which sounds wonderful. We do like a game with a story in the Geekerhood. Now the game isn't out quite yet, it's due out on the 12th of March, we did get a key from the devs, we could play it a little bit early, thank you very much devs, that's very kind of you, but as always, if you're interested, there's a link to the Steam Store page in the video description, so you can go and check the game out a little bit more if you would like to. But anyway, here we go, let's jump right in shall we, and get goblining. Dungeons. A most familiar setting for the earnest adventurer. Dark and musty halls, teeming with foul creatures, forgotten treasures, and copious amounts of experience points. Entombed in this particular cavernous hallway is an artifact of profound significance. A gemstone like no other. In pursuit of this artifact, three stoic adventurers delve into the darkness, eager to plumb its depths, unwitting to what lies in wait. Oh, okay, right. We're in, are we? Okie doke. Okay, so it looks to me, maybe, like we're controlling the adventurers right now. We're kind of seeing what it's like from the other side, are we? Okie doke. So we're going to learn the basics of combat in this dungeon. Okay, so we can sort of move about. Right, I'm with you. So are we moving? Oh, yeah, okay. We're moving them. So we've got... Can we zoom in? Can we zoom out? No, okay. So we've got at the front what looks like a kind of a halfling sort of maybe like a rogue type character. They've got a little kind of dagger type thing. They look quite nimble. So maybe like a, I don't know, a halfling, sort of a thief or I don't know, an assassin or something. Then we've got a classic dwarf character with a great big axe. And then at the back, I would say the most classic of all the classic wizardy characters. Big pointy hat, white beard, staff, good colours going on. I like the geek of a corporate colours. Very nice, the blue and the yellow. Okay, right. So we're going to head over here, are we? And then... Uh, okay, how do we... How, ah, right, okay. We click on things to interact with them. I am with you. It's very pretty. It looks wonderful. I like there's a lot going on. There's you know, multiple levels of background detail. And then we've got obviously the characters and the main bit of the environment. And there's foreground stuff as well. Okie doke. Right, let's climb down here then. This is intriguing. I thought, yeah, it was also goblin -y, But no, we're seeing the other side. Goblin. Widely regarded as a hideous and feeble. Okay, right, so there is a goblin, and as far as I can tell, the goblins are quite adorable. Let's go and have a little look, though, shall we? So, hello, hi, goblin friend. Do we need to sort of creep up on it? I kind of want to warn the goblin. Goblin! Goblin friend, look out! There's some ne'er-do-well adventurers here to possibly try and kill you to death. Okay, I think, do we have to go nearer? Oh, okay, battle. Eager to avoid the future of its experience points, they are sorted. Okay, right, yes, a fight is happening. Kill the goblin. I don't want to kill the goblin game. Why? Okay, maybe the point of this segment is to make us, you know, properly understand the strife of the goblins. Make us really sort of understand the torment they go through when the adventurers come down and sort of hack them apart. Okay, so combat is turn-based. Everyone falls in line to attack. Kill all the foes to win the battle. It feels a little bit one-sided, but okie doke. Everyone will move to the centre along this time bar. Okay, so first up is the halfling, then it's the dwarf, then it's the goblin, if the goblin is still there, and then at the end it's the wizard. Okie dokie, right, I am following you. When a character reaches the middle, their turn starts. Okay, right, so here we go. The halfling has a turn. It's your turn, select an attack. Okay, so it looks to me like we've got, what's that just there? That is a cost. A cost of two. I, ah, two time. That's two time, look. Because I think when we were focusing on that, that was kind of moving back a bit, was it? Okay, and then it's going to cause six damage. It deals 100% sword damage or weapon damage or whatever. So, yeah, there you go. Six power. Okay. So, uh, yes, a halfling, that character is. Uh, okay, right, let's do a plucky strike then. So I assume we... Ah, okay, right, and then we can choose who we want to go and uh, boop. Okay, I'm really sorry, Goblin. I'm really sorry. And look, they look adorable. Look at their nose. Look at their little pointy ears. Uh, okay, right, I'm really sorry, goblin friend. 
I'm sorry, but okay. They've just kind of jibbity jabbered you. Okay. Right, they go back. So, yep, after attacking, the position changes. I'm with you. And then the dwarf is up next. I'm, oh, I feel really awful because this is going to kill the goblin. <laughs> Okay, dwarf, you're gonna have to do a terrible thing here. Oh, it's got oh, it's got a massive skull on the cursor. Okay, sorry, goblin. I'm oh, I'm sorry. A loot bag, an honest reward for dispatching the squalid creature. I don't know what kind of loot that little goblin would be holding though, but let's go and find out, shall we? Let's pootle over here. Open. Okay, most foes drop valuable items when killed. Choose loot carefully. You only have limited bag space. Okay, so that goblin was carrying some junk. Yeah, okay, that makes perfect sense. Right, we'll pop the junk down there. Eager spoils. Perhaps the next yield will be a bit more substantial. Yeah, so let's hope so. Uh, okay, right, so do we just keep going and then find another unfortunate goblin to go and pick on? Oh, no, okay, hang on. We're kind of working our way through a map are we okay that's quite intriguing uh, okay i mean let's carry on going let's carry on going over this way again looking very pretty oh hang on i just heard a kind of an exploding noise of some kind what was that what was the exploding noise something went boom oh, goblins it appears that ill fortune has beset these hapless few their companion lies crushed beneath the rubble oh no one of their goblin friends has been squished underneath a big falling bit of old fortress or castle or something. And there they are, and that one's crying. We, ca we can't, in all good consciousness, go over there and just sort of bash them about, can we? That, that, that can't be right. Okay, maybe we have to go and have a fight with the poor goblins. Yeah, okay, battle. They attack the goblins in distress. Oh, uh, Joe, what? Who are the bad guys in this situation, eh? Who are the bad guys? I think it might be these folks over here. Uh, yeah, the next indicator shows you whose turn is coming up next. Okay, so again, it's the halfling. Ah, here we go. You can use this ability now that there's more foes. Ah, right, okay, so now there are more enemies. We can have a different attack. Okay, so that is a stone throw, and that targets the rear foes. Thrust stone inflicting 50% damage and also stun. They can't move for the next two, uh, like, sort of time counters. Is that turns? I don't know. But, okay, we'll do that, look. We'll chuck a thing at you, look. So, boom. There we go. They've been bopped on the head with the stone. <laughs> okay, one of your characters is tired. This happens after using an ability with a high cost. Characters that are tired will take more damage when attacked. Okie dokie. Characters in this area are tired and more vulnerable. Okay, so the stronger the attack they do, they then get worn out. Right you are. Okay, so then it's the dwarves go. The dwarf can roar to knock back all foes. Ah, okay. So they can push them back. Okay, do you know what? Let's do a roar. Oh, that's quite the targeting thing's quite nice. That's quite fun. Right, so dwarves can do a scary dwarven shout, pushing all the goblin turns back. And now the wizard gets a go. So they can either whack to deal nine damage or do a lightning bolt to stun somebody. I think let's just do let's just do that, shall we? Oh. <laughs> right, it's literally just smacking him in the face with a with a staff. Okay, the wizard is taking a bit of a kicking because the wizard's at the front. I, I, again I'm not I don't feel so bad about this because the these guys are evil. Um let's do a lightning bolt, shall we? Um It'll stun them. Let's do the one at the back then. Kabang! Ooh, wizardy powers you show off. Okay, I think the halfling can probably... Again, sorry, goblin friend. Sorry. They can take you out. I do apologise. And then the dwarf can then probably hack at you. That's going to finish you off. Oh, I feel terrible. <laughs> oh, and this one's stunned. This one is stunned. Oh, they do get to go. Right, so the halfling takes a bit of a damage. And... Now we can do this again. Okay, so finish them off. Sorry, goblins. Sorry. Okay, so go and get the loot again. Let's have a look. And it's more junk. Such a dismal bounty. One must slay great quantities of goblin for a decent recompense. Yes, okay, the narrator guy knows the deal. Yeah, they don't get a lot of stuff out of killing a goblin. Right, okay, no, on to the next. They chance upon greedy little burglars. Treasure rightfully theirs. Being plundered in front of their very eyes. 
Okay, so we're down here in a dungeon plundering it, but we see a treasure chest and we kind of think, do you know what, that's ours. That's not right, guys, but okay. Are we going to have to fight five goblins now? Uh, I th or is the one in the chest not going to count? The interrupt and lay claim to the treasure. No, the one in the chest. Oh, no. There's two at the back there that aren't kind of involved in the fight. I wonder if they're going to kind of jump in. I do not know. Uh, right, let's just work on them in order then, shall we? So, boop on you. And then you can probably just take that one out nice and easy. There you go. Hackity hack. That one falls apart. Sorry, goblin. And then the wizard gets a go. So, the wizard could do lightning bolt on that one at the front to stun that one. There you go. So, that kind of stops that one having a turn, effectively. Then the halfling takes damage, and then that one then wakes up and comes and punches the halfling in the face, which is fair. I, th I think it's quite fair. We're okay with this. Right, you stabity stab, or whatever it is you're doing, and then you can hackity hack. Sorry, goblin friend, this is not how it's supposed to be. And then the wizard can probably... We just got in there. Um, yeah, you can just whack them. There you go. Bang! And down the poor goblin goes. Oh dear. The goblins soon realize they have no chance at survival. In desperation, they hurl their loot at the assailants. Oh, it's all a bit sad, isn't it? Okay, but do we get some shiny goodies? They're just slowly backing away. Oh, and they're kind of crawling through a tunnel? Without tally, the goblins withdraw into the sanctuary of darkness. How strange. These creatures were fully expected to die. Perhaps their journey will be worth following. Oh, hang on. We're now the goblins. Ah, okay, right. We've become the goblins now. Okay, so the uh, sort of the hero characters. I mean, hero in quotes there, because you know, they're going around picking on little tiny unfortunate goblins. The heroes are now through there, and I assume the goblins crawled through a little space here. Maybe the halfling could get through. The halfling looks sort of similar in size, but I don't think the dwarf or the you know, the wizard could definitely not get through. So, okay, now, ooh, bats, now we're the goblins. Okay, we're in the deep stone ruins, that says. One despondent, one morose, and both with the shivers. Oh, okay, right, both with the shivers, as the voiceover man says. Right, so creep through here a bit. There are plenty of bats. There's a giant web. There's a giant web. Oh, there's a spider. Okay, it's it's a sort of a cartoony looking spider. But if you don't like spiders, look away now because there's a spider over there. And I suspect maybe there's going to be more than one, possibly. Right, hello, we're goblins. Yeah, okay. We're going to fight a spider. Okie doke. Uh, how good is the spider? spider? The occasional snack for a hungry goblin. At this size, however, the roles are reversed. Okay, so the roles are now reverse. We've got to now try and defend ourselves against the spider then. Okay, so uh, yes, what has it got? 12 hit points, but what can we do? Oh, you're called Gasp Goffer. That's a good name. Oh, I like that name. Okay, so Smack causes five points of damage. Stone Throw is... Uh, what's that? I can't work out what... Uh, 60% of five is, but okay, a smaller amount of damage and shove knocks them back. I mean, what if we just, I mean, do we just go in? Do we just go all in and just kind of just smack the thing about of it? There we go, that's five. And then you're going to get a go. So Ruin Tilter, you can smack it as well. So bang, it's down to two. The Goblin will then get next dibs on the go. So Gasp Goffer takes a bit of damage. But then we can just finish it off by doing that. Punchity punch, the spider goes down. Hope emerges as the goblins dispatch the threat. Okay, do we now get to pick up some loot? I think we do. Okay, oh, we found gold and the junk. The junk that we had before has now come with us in into the goblins' possession. But okay, maybe that's the stuff they took out the treasure chest or something. Uh, okay, we will have 15 gold. That sounds quite handy. Um, okay, right. Keep running this way. Oh, climb, it said there. Okay, so we can't go any further that way because there's a dead end. So now we have to climb up the kind of spider web and use it as a kind of a, a sort of a, a little kind of ladder type thing and then make our way up here. Okay, right, this is fine. A light, finally. 
A path out of this abyss. Okay, and then we head over to the right and... Ah, okay, now we're just sort of doing that automatically, are we? We just sort of slid up that. Uh, where do we go from here? Oh, okay, through there. Right, you are. Oh, that looks pretty. Oh, there's a shiny thing. Is that what they're after? Is that the exciting treasure? A familiar feeling beckons to them. Yes, I imagine, given that the game is called Goblin Stone, I think that might be the Goblin Stone, but let's go and find out, shall we? Maybe there might be a little bit of combat to do before we get it, but I don't think actually there is. Beneath the rubble. Okay, glint beneath the rubble. Yes, we see it. It's over there. We have got to go across a little kind of rickety looking sort of uh, log across a chasm first, but I'm sure we're fine. Oh no, we're not fine. <laughs> We've been ambushed by... Ah, and we're surprised as well. When characters are surprised in battle, they start further back on their time bar. This allows their foes an advantage. Okay, right. So we've been surprised now. Okie doke. But the cave spiders are coming in to attack us. Prudence and time are potent medicines. Okay, thank you, voiceover man. Uh, I was going to say, they are quite dangerous, those things. They're quite dangerous. Gasp Goffer can't take that many more hits, I don't think. Gasp Goffer is not doing well. Um, okay. Stun. What if we stunned you, to lob a thing at you, and stun you? Okay, so that pushes you from third... Oh, you're still second, though. You're still second. Um, shove. Knock them back. Or do we do that to you at the back there? Okay, so lob some stones at them and try to sort of knock them out a bit. And then... Oh, no, the spiders are still... Gasp, goffer. Oh, Gasp Goffer's going to die. Oh, no, Gasp might just survive the next thing, but they're not well. Gasp Goffer has had better days, I would say. Um, okay, can we can we run away? Can we sort of flee? Can we get out of it? I don't think we can. I think we just get... We fight until we drop kind of thing. Uh, okay, do you know what? Let's go out fighting, shall we? Smack the spider in the face. Let's our go again. Smack the spider. That spider goes down. But I think now Gasp Goffer is going to be up at the front. Farewell, Gasp Goffer. Oh, it's a sad time for Gasp Goffer. A mortal wound. Oh, hang on, what? You've got... How does that happen? You, you, you're supposed to be dead. <laughs> uh, okay, right. I mean, Let's just carry on whacking this thing then. So you're hanging on by a thread. Oh, hang on, what does that say? Injured in battle, max life is permanently reduced by 50%. Ah, okay, so you're still around. You're just really not very well. Right, okay. Wall at the cave spider. It goes down. They survived the ambush. And yes, we survived the ambush. A glorious victory. There's a bag of goodies over there. We shall open that. And it's more gold. That's quite welcome. Thank you. And now, on to the main treasure. The shiny thing. Let's go and pick up a shiny thing. Come on, goblin friends. Yes, we'll take that, please, because it looks nice. Um, yes, it is the Goblin Stone, a mysterious artifact. Okay, we'll have that then, please. Oh, okay, yep, yeah, wooshy stuff is happening. Wooshy things are going on. Okay, yep, yeah, the Goblin Stone is definitely doing something. As curiosity surpasses reason, they unearth a strange object. It indeed appears to be the artifact the adventurers so fervently coveted. As the stone awakens from its slumber, it radiates a light both beautiful and blinding. Strange spirits emanate from the stone. They swirl and undulate in jubilation. As the awestruck goblins peer into the brightness, the spirits speak out. They bid the goblins to seek a sacred place deep within the woods, and there rest the stone. Faced with such a spectacle, the goblins muster what they can to break their stupor. They pocket the stone and head for the surface. Okay, and we're back. And now our two goblins here have the goblin stone in their possession. Right, okay, so now we have to get out of here. We need to go to the surface. That looks a little bit ominous, but okay, please, nothing drop out of it. No, it was okay. And I think, by the look of that, are we nearly out? Yes. Okay. 
The old woods, okie doke. We're not underground anymore. Oh, it looks really pretty. Look at that, it looks lovely, apart from the big spider. That's not quite so nice. But uh, yeah, it looks very Up nice. The light. They are greeted by spring winds and the echo of new leaves stirring in the breeze. Okay, a new quest. Rest the stone. The mysterious stone has told of a ruins within these woods. The goblins have been charged to seek it out and place the stone inside. Okie doke. Right, so go and find some sort of ruins and then put the stone in it and then it'll charge up or do something magical. Okay, right, this is fine. Can we interact with other things? Can we sort of click on other things? Or is it just you know, specific things that get in our path? That we have to interact with like sort of you know the treasure or monsters or whatever there is a little kind of campsite over there oh camp does that mean that gasp goffer could possibly have a little bit of a sit down and a cup of tea and a biscuit and sort of heal up a bit a place of respite for the weary okay so choose an activity rest and recover heal 20 percent of lost life or discuss tactics each party member's combat speed is increased by five percent oh okay so if you do come to a camp and everybody's sort of, you know, fully healed up, you, you can do another thing. There is another option. You can sort of go for a more tactical thing rather than a recovering thing. Uh, we will rest and recover, though, please. They repose for a moment by the warm flame. Yes, they repose for a moment by the warm flame. Okay, so Gasp Goffer has to have a little bit of a lie down. <laughs> Why do you go in the tents? There was tents there, but okay. Um, yeah, okay, right, let's head over in that direction. There's our map. That's our inventory. So the map... Oh yeah, there you go. The Deepstone Ruin. So we are... Oh, I think if we head this way, we're going to leave that particular bit of the map. So let's do that then, shall we? So exit and look for a shiny new thing. Okay, we have a lovely map. I do like a fantasy world map. I think they look wonderful. I particularly like it when you read a fantasy book and in the front of the book is a map. I like that. I like a book with a map in the front showing you where everything is. So when they start referencing things in the book itself, you can nip back to the map and go, right, where's that? Is that near to there? Oh, it's quite far away or whatever. I do like that. I think this is a lovely map as well. So we were over there. That's where we met our goblin buddies. And now we've got to head over to the Old Brook Fields. Okay, yep, yeah, seems like a good place to go. Rest the stone. The mysterious stone is told of ruins. Okay, the goblins have been charged to seek it out and place the stone inside. Okay, so let's go and do that then, shall we? Let's go and put the stone inside this kind of mysterious ruin and see what happens. So leave the woods, find the ancient ruins, and there is potentially... Ah, there you go, rest the stone. Oh, rewards. Gold bag, stone, ore, wood, and bone. Okay, we get some exciting bits and bobs. The location type is, I don't know, sort of woody, kind of, you know, just sort of you know, general kind of fields and woods and things and meadows. And we don't know what the enemies are. And there's going to be ore and stone around. Okay, right, that's fine. No wood in the old woods but okay but they're so old the woods all gone i don't know uh yeah okay let's head over there then shall we here you can view each goblin's stats abilities and manage their equipment you can also reorder their combat positions to suit your strategy okie dokie so at the moment we only have the two peon goblins so the two basic types but i think from looking at the steam store page there's loads of different types all with different kind of abilities. There's kind of fightery ones and magic ones and archers and all that kind of stuff. Um, however, we've only got the two. Although, I will just swap them over a bit. Because Gasp Goffer is a little bit hurt. And Ruin Tilter isn't. So that'll make sense. So, yeah, okay. You two, head over there. And let's see if we can find some goblin buddies along the way. Because that would be useful. A bittersweet reunion, as they discover their camp had been further ravaged by adventurers. A goblin lies barely breathing. Their dungeon loot was never treasure, but medicines direly needed for their wounded. With their loot now lost, they wallow in despair. A queer sensation interrupts the morose scene, as the stone artifact acts on its own accord. The group beholds the spectacle, agape with wonder. The languishing goblin is bathed in a warm glow. Its wounds slowly mend as it returns to health. 
As the light subsides, bewilderment gradually gives way to joy. So the stone healed up that goblin. It brought that goblin back from death? United. They now set out for the forest's edge. Ah, okay, right. So we've got two new buddies by the look of it. We've got two new friends, look, because they've got different things on. So I think now, have we got four? Is that our party? Uh, that's our quest. That's the map. That's the inventory. Yeah, down here, look, we've got Thud Melter and Tail Reaper. Okay, very exciting. Jump. J uh, uh, do you know what? Okay, we'll jump. Uh, oh, it goes down here. Oh, okay. So we're, we're choosing a different path to go through the level. Okay, there is a mysterious thing there. But up there, there is something which could potentially be useful. Oh, okay. They sort of hop back up. All right, okay. So I assume we can't eat those mushrooms. But what can we do with that box? Can we open that? We found a chiseled stick. Okay, we can use that as a sword. Okie doke. And a rock on a stick, which is an axe. Okay. That's good. Okay, your raider can use that weapon. Click it to equip it. Okay, so we've got the weapon. Ah, look, so there we go. There it is sort of floating about. We can have a look at it. And then we're going to give that to... Ah, okay, right. So I think the ones with the red hats on are raiders by the look of it. They could be bandits potentially, but I think they might be raiders. Uh, so yeah, let's put that with you. So you can have that. And then we're going to go back in and our axe. Can we give it to the other one? Can we give it to Tail Reaper? I think we can. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got two goblins that are armed. Oh. Okay. So we can carry on that way. Oh, this is, this is very intriguing. Okay. So what's in there? What's in that thing down here? We're going to go and look at what's in the thing. We let's jump down a different level. What's in here then? What is this? The way is shut. Ah, okay, the way is shut. Okay, right, that's a little bit unfortunate, but okie doke, sort of maybe to be expected. Right, head back over this way then. Maybe, is that the ruin where we're supposed to go? Are we supposed to go there? I'm not sure, but okay, right, let's head over in this direction. Oh, upon a carcass concealed by the stench, a small trove of unclaimed meat and giblets. Uh, meat and giblets, where is the carcass? Oh, there. Okay, so I assume, can we eat that? We can harvest it. This is a bit grim, but okie doke. So we'll do that. Yep, got to eat, I suppose. So that gives us leather and bone. Oh, okay, right, we've not... Scarrings to the bone, leaving nothing to waste. Yes, okay, so I was going to say, we've not got the meat from it, because that's already gone, but we've got the other stuff from it. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That's fine. Right, so keep heading over in this direction. We're 33% of the way through. There is a very big, lovely box of loot over there and nothing in the way between us and it, which makes me a little bit suspicious. <laughs> is something going to jump out at us? No. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, some gold and an iron key that can open an iron gate. Is that the thing we saw at the very start? Okay, big door. Let's open it with a key. And there we go. We are through. Right, so yes, the path will becomes clear. Thank you, narrating person. So if we head over in this direction. Oh, there is an angry looking thing. Right, a wolf, I imagine. We can have a little... Oh, now there's two wolves. One just kind of popped out of nowhere. Okay, their filthy more salivate for goblin flesh. Six points of damage. Ow, they're young wolves. Uh, okay, so Thud Melter is up first. So Thud Melter can do 6 to 8 damage, targeting the front row, with a 20% chance to cause bleeding damage. That's quite good. Wakey, wakey. Okay, targets first or second foe. Deals 65% damage twice. If the target is... Ah, so the target's got an effect on it, so stunned, frozen, or slowed then a finale for 70%. Oh, that's quite good. That's quite good, but no point using it now because it hasn't got any of those effects on it. Or pick wounds. Ah, okay, I see. So if the thing is bleeding, uh, it, you can sort of go and open those wounds up a bit and make it bleed even more. Okay, so for now, we'll just do a slash attack. Oh, they can roll in a dramatic sort of a way. Uh, now it's ruin tilter. Can we... Can we stone throw you? 
Let's do that. Lob a stone. Does that slow you down enough? Yes, I think it did. I think now Tail Reaper gets a go. Um, so you can... Ch oh, hang on. No. Um, we can't you... Hang on. You've got a different ability. You've got a different thing. You've got Exterminate. Target's the front foe. Deals 130% damage. If the target dies, this ability costs one instead. Cannot be used on the first turn. Oh, we can't go back to five. Oh, it can't be used on the first turn. Ah, okay, right. I get it. That's fine. So you can do that. That wolf is going to get to go. Oh, it's poor, <laughs> it's poor Gasp Goff. Oh, no. No, Gasp Goffer might actually get away with it. Uh, you might be able to finish it off, actually, Gasp Goffer. Yes, a swift punch to the face of a wolf and down it goes. Uh, and you've gone back into second. Okay. Third melt takes another fairly hefty hit. Uh, okay. Slicing dagger. Did you not have a different... Uh, hang on, these are... Are they different now? Where's the thing where you can get into the wounds or whatever it was? Uh, oh! There's different... Oh, I see. You get a different sort of range of things each time. Okie doke, I didn't know that. Um, let's do that and give it a bleed attack. So now it's bleeding, so it's going to take damage over time. Um, it's still got 24 right now, which is a bit worrying, but okay. Right, Gasp Goffer, just whack it and then run away. You get to the back because you took some damage. Uh, now it's Ruin Tilter. Uh, let us chuck a thing at it. We'll lob a, a rock at you to then stun you a bit. And then Tail Reaper at the front, Exterminate. Okay, deals 130% damage. And will that kill it? I'm not, I don't know. Nine, I don't know what 130% is of nine. We'll just do it anyway. <laughs> it might push you to the back, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, oh, it's a critical. A crippling strike. Okay, that was pretty effective. Well done, goblins. Yes, there are many who hunt them. Okay, let's open up the thing. 100 gold. Wow, okay, that's wonderful. Harvest some berries. That might be quite good. Just grab a little snack there. What do we get from that? Um, heals 10% life. So how do we go about using that then? Do we click it? Uh, because, yeah, we've got Thud Melter's a little bit injured. So could Thud Melter just um, do that up to the top? Yeah, okay. There we go. So we've got three left. Lovely. Uh, oh, look in the background. It's so pretty. Right, so 67% of the way through. So, yes, I imagine at the end of this bit, are we going to, I don't know, do something with with sort of setting up a lair, a home or whatever? I don't know. Let's keep going. Oh, they've seen something of interest. Okay, there's definitely an interesting thing there. There is an interesting thing behind you. We're not looking at the big thing behind us, which appears to be a very exciting sort of mountain with... Big kind of runic slab thing sticking out. And then a giant kind of almost magical looking tree perched on the top. That's very exciting. Um, is that anything that we need to interact with? I don't think so. We were pointing over here quite a lot. Ah, okay. Some sort of uh, like a signpost sort of a thing. So does that bring us to the end? Possibly it does. Yeah, maybe if we exit, that'll bring us the end of this particular bit. Okay, we've left the woods. That's good. Okay, we're out of the woods. That's pretty good. Yep, okay. And you're injured, but we've picked up some goodies. Yeah, okay, good. That was pretty good. Let's see where we go next. Right, there we go. Next stop, Ancient Ruins. Wonderful. That's where we need to go to put the stone down and then do all sorts of exciting stuff. So let's head over there right now, shall we? We know there's going to be wolves and spiders there, but that's fine. Yep, okay, do you know what? Let's dive straight in. Let's just get on with it, shall we? And that worked quite well. That worked pretty well last time. We will stick with that order again, please. Absolutely. They enter a deeper part of the woods. The scent of danger lingers heavy. Indeed it does, voiceover man. But don't worry, our goblins are ready. Uh, okay, there's something here. Ahead. An adventure rests. Quietly they sneak. Oh, I don't know how to sneak. How do we sneak? I don't know how to sneak. Yeah, there's an adventurer there. And generally, yeah, the adventurers do try to chop us up, as we've seen. How do we... Oh, are we sneaking up to attack them? Or are we sneaking by them? I am not entirely sure. We'll just... Oh, 
Oh, we've gone into like a sort of a sneaky thing. <gasps> They've got a goblin prisoner. Oh, you monster. You monster. Okay, let's try. Oh, botherations. Okay, that was a trap, was it? Ah, bother. Okay, oh, was that us attacking them? Oh, maybe we got the jump on him because he was asleep. Ah, okay, right, this is good. Uh, let us do the bleeding damage thing because that's quite good. So you've only got 18 points, but if you start bleeding out, that's got to be a good thing. Um, we'll stone throw you to cause a bit of damage and also yeah, stun you a bit because you've been whacked in the head with a rock. You can... Ooh, if you pick the wounds, that opens it up, but they've only just been caused. So that's fine. I think we'll just do a chop. Just do a classic axe chop on you. Oh my goodness me. That caused a lot of damage. Okay. Um, and then if we... If we throw another rock at you, that'll stun you again and hopefully move you back quite a bit. Uh, oh, no. You know, you're still... <laughs> right. To be felled by the goblins he hunts. <laughs> How shameful. His quarry watches you from behind iron bars. I think that was the bleeding damage, wasn't it? I think that finished him off. Okay, that was good. Right, let's take a look at the loot. What do we have? Uh, medium adventure stuffs. Okay, so we can just sell that for gold. Okay, that's just like a tradable thing. Uh, right, hello. Who are you? Can we help you out? Choose. Um, add the new goblin. Oh, we can just put them straight in. Uh, foil rocker. Okay, so foil rocker is a guard. So two raiders, two peons are now a guard. And look, he's got a little stool. That's his shield, is it? That's his shield, little kind of wooden stool type thing. Okay, that's quite adorable. Um, yep, yeah, okay. Friend added. Let them out, please. Another one joins their company. This fellow is clad in armour. I kind of feel like maybe he should be at the front, possibly, if he's got loads of armour. Can we, how do we do this? How do we do the order? Ah, just a bit like that. Okay, yeah, that works well. However, we kind of want it to be a bit like that. That works quite well. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, there you go. Look, he's got a stool. Actually equipped a, a, an actual item itself of a stool. Right, wonderful. Up to five in our goblin party. Let's go and see where the adventure takes us next. A fork in the path. The path will often split in two, each offering its own allure and possibilities. Both paths will eventually bring you to your goal. Once you've chosen a path, you'll no longer be able to tread the other. Right, I see. So we have to make a decision here. And we can either go for harvest or treasure. Uh, I mean, treasure's exciting. But as we've seen with the adventurers, their sort of, you know, their lust for treasure does get a little bit kind of a little bit bad in the end and they do go around killing poor innocent you know, creatures like us goblins so maybe let's go down the route of harvest shall we let's go up here and we'll carry on this way we've got plenty of treasure it's fine we can do without treasure we'll have some goodies instead please we'll pick up some resources okay no going back we can never go back that way again okay uh, we'll have some food berries are good this is good. Yep, that's some healing stuff. Wonderful. It's bitter, but its fruit is sweet. Yes, indeed, voiceover man. Stop popping up at random points, please. It's very distracting. Uh, yeah, okay, so head over to the next bit. There is a treasure. There is a box. Again, I'm immediately suspicious of this, but okay, we'll head over to the box. We'll open the box. Don't be a monster in it. Uh, oh, a big pile of gold. We will have that, thank you. Where's our other gold gone? I thought we picked up a massive pile of gold. Uh, we've got three green gems, another load of adventure stuff, and a bit of meat. Some slightly rancid meat. Mmm, lovely. <laughs> Very nice indeed. Right, so carry on heading in this direction. We can sort of get a little clue as to what's coming up. Ah, there's an encounter there, I think, of some description. So we've got harvest... Coming up. Oh, there you go. Look, so yeah, the treasure route would have been treasure and harvest. Oh, so it's the same sort of thing anyway. So it, because it's sort of introducing us this idea, we don't lose out. It's just the order that we did things in first. Oh, OK. So we've got harvest, then a thing, then a camp and then another break by the look of it. Right. Yeah. OK, let's head over in this direction. Right. We have a bag down here. That's OK. Not so bothered about the bag. 
I am a little bit more bothered by the giant, what I assume is an orc over there. They look absolutely huge, but are they okay with us? Are they sort of all right with us? I'm not sure. Let's have a look through the bag of goodies. That's some more gold. Wonderful. Right. Hello. Do you want to hurt us? Or are you our friend? They happen upon a downtrodden orc still clad in rags and shackles. At his feet, a freshly dug grave adorned with a bone club buried in the barrow. The goblins timorously disturb the orc in his mourning. Uneasily, they speak to him, ask about a nearby ruin in these woods. Barely noticing their presence, the orc wipes away a tear with one hand as he raises the other to give direction. Politely thanking the grieving orc, the goblins discreetly withdraw and leave him to his sorrow. Oh, the poor orc was sad. The poor orc's grieving for a lost friend or family member or partner or whatever. I do not know. Uh, okay, I think what we'll do is we can camp there for a bit and then we get... Ah, there's a battle. Okay, so we get a choice, then a battle, and then we'll see where we go. So do you know what? We kind of know what we're doing with this a little bit. We can you know, do the camping bit and we can do the sort of the treasure and harvesting. So let's rejoin at the point of a battle. Okay, we're about to go into battle against what I think must be that spider over there. Although there is a little bird there. Is that bird going to surprise us in some way? Is that going to be the enemy? Is it going to turn out to be some sort of terrifying death bird or whatever? Let's find out. No, it flew away very wisely. And now there is a spider. Okay, we should be fine. Okay, now there's three spiders. That's a little bit more of a surprise, but okay. And there you go, look. Foil Rocker here is able to use some armor. They can take a little bit less damage. Okay, that's pretty good. So they can bash for a little bit of damage. They can rattle to target the front foe and deal 100% armor as damage. Oh, that's no good at all. Or armor up. Target so. Oh, yeah, do that. Yeah, gain some more armor, please. That's quite handy. Uh, right, and then I think... Can we just... We can slicing dagger any of these. Do the one at the back, then. So do that. That'll make them bleed. Ruin Tilter takes a bit of a hit, which is a shame. Uh, then it's your go. So you can just... Just smack it. Just smack the case. Well, that was a critical hit. Well done. Uh, you can chop to get rid of that thing. So that thing dies. Yay, sorted. A powerful start. Yes, very good. Uh, right, you're bleeding. So could we stone throw you to stun you? You get stunned. You maybe go to the back of the queue for attacks or whatever. Uh, and then we've got foil rocker. Uh, target self. Remove all armor gained and heal. Oh, that's quite good. That's quite good. Uh, however, we will just kind of bash you in the head a little bit. There we go. Right, you are going to get... Oh, no, we're going to... That died. That bled to death. That's good. And now Ruin Tilter gets a go. Uh, just whack it. Just whack it, because then we've got Shield Face at the back there absorbing all the damage, taking one instead of whatever it was, lots. Uh, and then, yeah, just please whack it. There you go. And then I think... We should be okay. So one quick stabity stab. Cave spider goes down. And there we go. A glorious victory. Okay, open up the goodies. The spiders for some reason had a load of gold. But okay, that's fine. That bird's going to fly away. So what's next? We've got another... There's no what's going on there. Another battle. Another goblin to rescue. And then out of here. Okay, right, let's pick things up again at the next battle, and then maybe we can rescue a new goblin buddy. Uh-oh, there are two adventurers. This could be a little bit of an issue. It's probably okay to fight one of them, but two could be quite difficult. I mean, look, that guy's sword is bigger than us. That's going to hurt if that hits us. However, there is a goblin friend over there, and you know what? We have to go and rescue them. All for one and one for all. In we go. Charge into battle, my goblin friends. The road ahead will not be easy. Ah, it's fine. We'll muddle through. Armoured foes. Okay, yeah, foes' armour are harder to beat since it reduces the amount of damage they take from attacks. But bleed ignores armour. Okay, noted. That's quite good to know. So, foil rocker goes first. Intercept. Uh, intercept the targets first or second foe's attack oh yeah can we do that um how does this work exactly if we go to if we do that look 
then I don't really know what that did, but okay. I'm, I'm assuming it's an exciting thing. You can throw a daggery thing at the guy at the back and make him bleed, because that'll take damage. Oh, okay, so we ran in and took his attack. Oh, that's quite good. Foil rocker, that's really good. Um, let's whack you. We'll just run up and punch you. Okay, so five points of damage, not too shabby. Then it's Tail Reaper. Can we slice and dagger the chappy at the back? The feeble adventure. Just to make them both bleed. Because bleeding damage is good. Gasp Goffer. Oh, Gasp Goffer. <laughs> oh dear, they are taking bleeding damage. But Gasp Goffer is not very well. Um, let's... You've got the shield thing. Let's do... Let's do that again, because that was quite good. That was quite handy. You running in to take the damage was pretty good. Right, Gasp Goffer, just lob a rock at that one and get out of there. Just just get out of there, because you're going to die if you get another hit, I think. Uh, Ruin Tilter, can you... Can you do a stone throw on that one? Just lob rocks. There you go. Yay for rock throwing. <laughs> Okay, this is good. They are taking bleeding damage again. You can... Uh, I mean, do we... Ooh, exterminate. Yeah, let's do that on you. And boom. And okay, that took a lot out of us. So that one at the back is now exhausted. They've intercepted the attack again. Hardy Adventurer is indeed quite hardy. Um, if the target's stunned, frozen or slow... You can add another attack, but they're not, unfortunately. That is a nuisance. Go and just choppity chop. Okay, Hardy Adventure is nearly done. Feeble Adventure is taking a lot of bleeding damage, which is great. Um, okay, how about then? If you, you've already got one point of armor. You run in and just whack them. That's five points of damage. That's not too bad. That's another two points from bleeding. Feeble Adventure is nearly done. Feeble Adventure is almost out of it. If you get one good. One good critical here, Gasp Goffer. Oh, I was going to say, you could take them out. It'd be a poetic moment, but no. Oh, Ruin Tilter. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, I know. They were a bit rubbish, thankfully. Okay, they're both on one. They're both on one. Do you know what? Finish this. Let's go and kill you. You've been killed. To Away with you. Yes, voiceover person. Uh, and then just smack you as well. There we go. Ruin Tilter gets the final hit. We will go and pick up the goodies. Uh, oh, medium adventure stuffs. Okay, and... Uh, okay, yeah. Oh, hang on. More medium adventure stuffs. Was that different to that? Uh, medium adventure stuffs. Uh, oh, in poor condition. And that's in okay condition. Righty-ho, got you. And what can we do with you? You are, if we put you in... A shaman. Ah, so you could do magic-y stuff. Wonderful. Yes. Okay, I like the sound of that. So let them out. Hello, new friend. This captive is garbed in peculiar vestments. It appears quite grateful and joins the group. Wonderful. So now we're at six. However, two of them are a little bit beat up. They're not doing very well. So maybe we could give one of them some rancid meat. Gasp, Goffer. I feel like you should have some rancid meat. But lucky you, eh? Uh, and then we'll give you a few berries. And you can have some berries as well. How many have we got now? Just a couple more heals. There we go. Marvellous. Right. Splendid. There we go. So that's all that sorted. Uh, where are we going next? We are... Oh! Leaving this bit of the map, I think. 70% of the way through. But I think, yes, the next bit is over here. Do we go to a new bit of map? I... Do not know. We'll find out. Ah, is that the ancient ruin? Is that what we're looking for? It looks ancient and it looks ruined. It would meet all of the criteria for an ancient ruin. I suspect maybe that's what we're looking for. That looks like the way in. Oh no, there's pesky adventures over there. There are humans. Boo to the humans. They are sneaker. Hang on, is that a tavern? Quietly, the goblins approach the ruins, peering from behind a bush. They watch nervously as a pair of human adventurers awkwardly stumble out of the ruins. Deeming it too dangerous to proceed, they search for a more discreet way to enter the ancient ruin. I mean, I assume that door there is where we go, because it's round here. And also, when I put my cursor over it, it lights up. Magical lit-up doorways are good. So how about 
We head in through here. Is this okay? Can we get in? The goblins make their way under the tree through a dark and uncomfortably narrow tunnel. They miserably crawl through the crannies until they reach the tunnel's end. Unbeknownst to the goblins, they find themselves intruding into a human-infested establishment hidden beneath the tree. The crowd scatters in a frenzy at the sight of the unexpected trespassers. As the chaos ebbs, a surly innkeeper and his flunkies are all that remain. He turns to the goblins with a baleful glare, intent on exacting retribution. Ah, right, okay, we're gonna have a bit of a fight. Because, yes, we have, um, we've encountered an innkeeper, although he is marked as the defiler of the ancient ruins. So, yeah, he's the bad guy here. We're coming here for good. Uh, right, so status effects. Foes may use status effects like haste to gain an advantage. Counter this by inflicting stun or slow. How? However, I didn't know this. Look, however, be cautious as foes slowly build resistance to effects used on them. That's quite handy to know. So if you do keep on chucking rocks at them to stun them, eventually they're going to get used to that and it's not going to work so well. Right, that is quite handy to know. We should be okay, although... Although this innkeeper is a bit of a beast. You've got 80 hit points and you're armed with a gigantic, <laughs> a gigantic like leg of ham or something. That's fantastic. Right, Foil Rocker, you can intercept his attack. That's what you can do. So if he then comes at us, which he's doing. Oh, botherations. Okay, right. Now we've got Cooks. Oh, no, this is bad. Okay, right. Let us target you with your dagger thing. So you can just start bleeding. That's useful. Um, that cook just, what did you do? You just said, get him, boss, and then ran to the back of the line. Okay, <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Um, if we wallop you with the stone, so we go boop, you're now stunned. Have you got the attack thing which we can, um, no, no, you haven't. We, I can't remember who's got the one with the thing which affects people that they're, when they're stunned. Uh, okay, we'll just make you bleed. We'll make the innkeeper do some more bleeding because I don't know if that mounts up, but the innkeeper's quite tough, so we'll try and work on that. Um, and then we will chuck a stone also at the innkeeper, just to make them a bit stunned as well. So the innkeeper's not having a good time of it. Cook A is having a bad time. Ah, and here is Quip Hunter, our new kind of wizardy person. Deals 80 to 100% of magic damage, I assume, with a 50% chance of slow, with a hex. Life Shock. Uh, heal a target or heal a target ally or foe for 25% of your power plus your spirit. Okay, the undead take magic damage or kindle spirit is heal an ally over five turns for 25% of your power. I mean, we're okay at the minute. So how about we hex the innkeeper because the innkeeper is bad and we don't like the innkeeper. Uh, right, okay, we're doing a pretty good job of stopping them having turns. We're doing quite well. How about then, you can you can armor up, so you can get some better armor going on. Uh, he's a get him boss. I think it's now your go, but we absorb the damage with our armor, which is great. Uh, ah, we can't do the thing where we run in and take the attack again, and they've been slowed. How about you just bash the innkeeper? There you go, we hit you. <laughs> We hit you with a great big kind of uh, stool thing. Right, if we hex the innkeeper again. So do that down to 62. That's pretty good. Uh, this is what I wanted. This one. Wakey, wakey. So do 65% damage twice if they've got stun, which they have, and a finale for 70%. Okay, this could be quite good. So we're on 62% damage. So bang, bang, bang. Down to 54. That was pretty good. Well done. Um... We can then do a smack on you. I kind of feel like if we take the innkeeper out, then it probably would be better. Just chuck another rock at the innkeeper. Oh, they resisted it. Ah, okay, there we go. That's what it means by they're resisting it. Okay. Um, exterminate targets the front foe, but they're not going to die. So let's not do that. Um, oh, we can do wakey-wakey again. Targets the first or second foe. Absolutely, yes. 
Let's let's knock some uh, knock some sense out of the innkeeper there with a big axe. Wonderful. Uh, and then you can stone throw him just to make him a bit stunned. This is good. The guy at the back is exhausted. <laughs> you guys are a bit rubbish. Oh, okay. He's throwing Molotov cocktails around, which is a surprise. I'll be honest. Sticky hoodoo. Target second and third foes. Uh, slows them down. Yeah, do that. Oh, magic is happening. There we go. We've slowed them down, which is good. They're still taking that. Oh, no, he's not taking bleed damage anymore. We need to make you do bleed damage. Um, you've not got stun, freeze, or slow on you, which is a nuisance. Okay, we'll make you bleed again. So there you go. Oh, no. Ah, no, you ran and took the attack. Well done, foil rocker. <laughs> good job, good job. Um, shove is knock back. So you could get pushed back one. Uh, yeah, do you know what? We'll do that. We'll shove you out of the way. Oh, crikey. There you go. Right, so now it's the uh, the innkeeper at the front. Uh, we will intercept the innkeeper. So we'll protect. Don't worry. Don't worry. You've got it. Full Rocker's got your back, everybody. Just do a regular punch. Just just punch him for two points. He's got armor. It's a bit of a nuisance. Uh, you're going to come in. Oh, Foil Rocker's really not very well. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, we could, we could do another slicing dagger thing on somebody just to make them bleed out a bit. Yeah, on you, look. You can do some bleeding. Uh, oh, Ruin Tilt is also going to get hurt. Very hurt. Um, Life Shock, that's healing. That's slowing them down. That targets the first or second foes. Oh, no, this isn't going very well now. Right, we'll do that on you. That caused some damage. Uh, and then if we could stone throw you to stun you. Hope you're not immune to it. There you go. Right, so you're now stunned, which is good. So you can just stand there for a bit and just look confused. We will then... Ah, here we go. Boom. You go down. Cook A is gone. Okay, so the odds are now a little bit more in our favour. Um, wakey, wakey, we can't do... We can do, but we don't get the 70% bonus thing on it which is a shame and that's not going to work either okay just do that then run over and just attack them that's fine you ah okay you swapped with the innkeeper oh botherations right we have to take the innkeeper down the innkeeper is the one calling all the other people in um we will oh you're really injured you're really injured but you need to intercept okay intercept the innkeeper's attacks again Sorry, I'm really sorry to have to ask you to do it. And then just wail on the innkeeper as much as we can. The innkeeper has to go down. Whatever we can do to the innkeeper. Um, first or second foe. Uh, do you know what? It's probably worth doing. Just do that. Just whack him a couple of times. Got a critical out of it. That's not so bad. That's all right. Uh, we'll lob a rock at them. That might stun them. Yep, that worked. They're stunned. This is great. That looked very dramatic. You tenderizes with a rolling pin. Oh, you meanie pants. Um, targets first or second. Oh, they're stunned. Yeah, do it again. 16 down to 10. Not too shabby at all. Right, we've got to get rid of you. <laughs> oh, I get blocked. That was good. That was good. Blocked. Foil rocker's not very well. Foil rocker, no. Uh, hex on the innkeeper. Hex the innkeeper. Innkeeper's down to two. Just two. Um, you can't salvage. You could bash the person at the front, but that's no good. How do we skip your turn? Uh, I don't know if you can skip. Okay, just do an attack at the front and run away. Critical damage. That was pretty good. We need to get the innkeeper stone throw. We're going to kill the innkeeper by throwing a stone. Okay. The innkeeper. He's blocked it. Oh. Okay. The, oh, no, no. Foil Rocker. Foil Rocker's taken a mortal wound. No. Okay, that was that was bad. Um, we can't use that because the innkeeper's gone to the back. This is terrible. But the innkeeper's not bleeding, though. Do some bleeding, innkeeper, you pesky scoundrel. Uh, and then we will... Can we shove you to the back? Oh, the innkeeper's still at the back, even though we shoved him to the back. There you go, right? The innkeeper's now moving. The innkeeper's gone. The innkeeper has died. Oh, we have to take down the two cooks, even though the leader's gone. Oh, okay. Um, well, we could have healed you up, couldn't we? Let's do that, shall we? 
let's heal you. We could have done that before a little bit. Oh, I didn't like it did very much, but okay. These guys are a bit rubbish. They don't cause much damage. Let's just, just wail on them. Just do punching. There we go. More punching. Go on, Ruin Tilter. Punch to punch. Down goes the cook. Someone else is going to have to make the soup tomorrow. Sorry, everybody. You can do that on them. And that's seven points. And you can enact a final bit of revenge by just smacking him in the face with the stool. There we go. Down. Critical hit of two. <laughs> there we go. Sorted. Is that it? Are we in the building? Oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's some treasure there. We'll have that. Hopefully it's got loads of stuff in. Uh, okay, green gem things, blue gems, little blue gems, and a ham hammer. Ah, okay. Right. So we could give somebody a ham hammer if we wanted to. <laughs> Who'd like a ham hammer? It's got... I don't know what empty empty means. Uh, oh, I see. It's going to replace either the sword or the axe. Uh, I quite like quite like the axe. We'll replace the sword, look, with a ham hammer. There you go, Thud there Melter. You've got a ham hammer. Uh, and, okay, where are we now? Ah, 100% through the ancient ruin. Right, here we go then. So I imagine now we get to seat the goblin stone and, I don't know, create a little home for the goblins. That's kind of what I want to see, really. We're kind of, yeah, we know what's going on with the combat now. I want to see the little kind of, yeah, the, the bit where you dig out a little base for them. Let's see if we can get that sorted out. The goblins descend through an old garbage chute as their eyes adjust to the darkness. An uncanny landscape of endless human refuse reveals itself. Oh, I think we're here. I think we're about to begin building our lovely new goblin lair. Each goblin lair begins with the Ancestors' Hall, the sacred dwelling place for the souls of ancestral goblins. The strength of the lair will depend on the souls of its deceased. And then there's a big flashy build button. Yeah, okay. Let's press build and see what happens. Calling what the stone has told them, they come to the realisation that beneath all the filth lies what they seek. Stone in hand, they gingerly place it atop the edifice. Suddenly, as if disturbed from a great slumber, violent waves erupt, filling the cavern with relentless energy. Mounds of human waste are swept aside by the vindictive force revealing the great goblin lair, previously thought to have been lost to antiquity. Okay, show us. I want to see the great goblin lair. Oh, oh, it's all cleared out. I, I want to go back and look at the goblin lair because it looks wonderful. Can we go and have a nosy, please? Although this is also very pretty. This is quite nice. There's a nice sort of little stream going on. There we go. We have a goblin lair. Wonderful. Can we go and have a look then? I want to go and have a little look around. Oh, it looks very homely. Oh, I like that. Okay, we've completed our first quest. We get some stone and some bone and some ore and some wood and other bits and bobs. Okay, wonderful. Right, now what do we do? Voice over man, you can tell us what to do. With the goblin and stone in place, the lair can be rebuilt. Begin by building a war room. Okay, so now we're going to go and have a bit of a fight with the people that have once oppressed us, are we? Okay, how do we build a war room then, game? How does that happen? That's the surface. That is wiggling around unclaimed items. Claim all your items for starting next adventure or lose them forever. Oh no, take all the stuff. A larder is needed. Okay, we don't we don't have any of these things. Uh, we can upgrade the lair or we can... Oh, here we go. Empty. Oh, we have to zoom out. I see. Right, I see. There's a little something over there that looks like... Is that how we move between different levels? But there is an empty chamber just there. Right. So you all come over here. These were once the ruins of a great war room where ancient goblins plotted their grand adventures and expeditions. Rebuild it and unlock the endless adventures that await in the vast world beyond. Right, okay, so press the big flashy build button and we have a war room. We've got more goodies. Okay, the war room looks very exciting. This is where the adventuring party gathers, ready to be equipped and outfitted for the challenges ahead. When you're all set, set the map to embark on your adventure. Okay, so now I've got to build a campground to recruit goblins, as well as a larder and an, ar and, and an armory. Okay, so I think, can we come out of here? Um, how do we come out? Ah, there we go. Right, we come out of that. So how do we build a larder, for example? So if we want to put a larder just there, oh, 
here we go. Because, yeah, we need to store some stuff. And then the armory can go next to the war room. So if we put the larder in there, that looks lovely. Yeah. Okay, so 10 leather and 10 fibre. Oh, we must have that. Yeah, okay, get it done. Right. Construct a larder is complete. Uh, store materials. Oh, it's got a little kind of cutting the ribbon thing on it. Larder servers dedicated storage rooms for treasure and materials used for construction. Right click on any item in the larder to access and view the available options for that item. Okie doke. So, if we then come out of that and click... Ah, we don't have that thing in the corner anymore because I imagine what's happened is we've put all the stuff in here. There we go, look. We've stored all of our junk and other bits and bobs down here, which is good. Uh, how can we, like, sell that? How do we... Do we click it and just sell it? Treasure can be safely sold for gold. So if we're clicking it... Oh, no, it's not doing anything. Uh, right click? No. I don't know how we sell that stuff. Maybe somebody comes by to buy it. I'm not sure. Uh, right, and then I think we head over here and store weapons. So we're going to need 10 leather, is that? And 10 ore. We've got plenty. Build an armory. Absolutely, yes, please. They can run in. They go go and cut the ribbon on that. And we have an armory. Welcome to your cache of weapons. I mean, it's not very much right now. I wouldn't call it a cache. <laughs> it's not very good. Some of them aren't even weapons, really. One of them just a big leg of meat. Uh, equip them uh, via goblin's character sheet or directly from here. To arm your goblin, left click on a weapon. Yes, okay, we're fine with that. So there we go. Look, can we have a look at that as well? Can we zoom in and have a little look at the rooms now? So, hang on, go that way. So the armoury, I like that. It's got a big kind of exciting smiley goblin face sort of forge foundry thing in the middle. Some shields and weapons and barrels and things. They've got little kind of round sort of doorways going through. That's the stairs to move about the levels. This is the war room. It looks very dramatic. Big kind of candelabra thing going on. All the little goblins just sort of hanging around. Then we've got the main kind of ancestral hall. And then down there, yes, we have the larder, which we've seen already, where we keep all our stuff. Wonderful. Okay, there we go. So that's kind of you know, the first big thing in the game, I think. The first big thing is to find your goblin. Oh, look, there it is. Look, we came along here. We walked along here. went through that door. You can build your goblin lair. And this is the first big step. And then you know, from here... I imagine as we go out and do some adventuring, we're going to unlock new types of rooms and pick up more resources and find more goblins and all that kind of stuff. Okay, this is very exciting. I think what we'll do is we'll take one little trip out, shall we? Let's take one little trip out because I think we have seen sort of what the game is about and how it works at a fairly basic level. Yeah, we haven't done much of the story or whatever, but we've done the very basics. We've got the goblin kind of lair founded. And yeah, we've got rid of all the human muck that was there. And we've got a lovely ancestor hall now. So um, yeah, let's maybe go and do a little trip, shall we? Let's go and sort this out. Yeah, let's go and just assign some people. And we shall have a little jaunt up on the surface. Oh, we need a campground. Ah, okay, right. We haven't built a campground yet. Hang on a minute. Sorry, everybody. Is that up here then, I assume? Surface. Okay, there you go. The perfect place up a campground to attract traveling visitors. Okay, and that might be how we get new goblins in. Because at the minute, they've got no idea that we're there. Okay, there we go. Wandering goblins gather here to squat on your land and marvel at the lair. Many seek admittance. Recruit a few of them to create an adventuring party. Oh, oh, okay. Right, we've completed the restoration of the lair. We get some shiny monies, which is good. Okay, so Jowl, Goffer, Cork, Boomer and Rock Bunter. <laughs> Crikey, some amazing names. Um, are also waiting to come in. Okay, so can we have you? Every goblin comes with a unique genetic code, generating genetic traits that modify stats and abilities. Each goblin can have up to four traits, but only two can be active at a time. Now, I believe from when I was looking at the Steam Store page and all the kind of bits and bobs about the game, you can make the goblins do, you know, the, the stalk letter writing to breed new goblins. And the genetic traits do kind of combine and pass down and such like. So there you go. This is sort of an important thing. You haven't got any genetic traits. Oh, OK. I'm glad the game told us about that. Ah, there we go. Finding new traits. Okay, so you are a brute. Body plus two, but mind minus three. It doesn't matter so much. Uh, so maybe, how do we recruit you? 
Do we let you in? Recruit to live in the lair. There you go. And also you can come in. Because you've got to defend your thing. So yes, you can come in as well. Right. There we go. Joe Walt Rockbunter. We're not going to leave you outside on your own. You can come in too. Welcome aboard. So now, can we go and have a little look around? Um, oh, hang on. No, I want to change my team now. How do we change the team? War room. Uh, because... We could, let's, do you know what, let's let Gasp Goffer have a break. Let's let them go out. <laughs> because, oh, hang on a minute, how do I drag people in? We'll let, we'll let Jal Goffer come in. Because Gasp Goffer's been quite badly hurt multiple times. So we'll let them go in, have a little bit of a sit down. You can have a rest. And we've got two, like, defendy people then, which is quite handy. So yeah, there we go, right, that'll do. And now, with that done, we shall, uh, yeah, go to the world and have a little look around. Oh, the map, it's in a tree stump. So we've got the old woods, hinterlands and golden hollows. And then do we carve out more as the story goes on? I do not know. Right, the old woods. Uh, first adventure awaits at the Merry Foothills. Yeah, over there. Okay, let's head out to the Merry Foothills, shall we? There's going to be wolves and people and spiders. Okay, that seems fine. We can muddle through with that, absolutely. Let us begin the journey. Right, here we go. Up ahead is a shrine. Okay, that could be interesting. Let's go and take a look at the shrine. Is it a goblin-y sort of a shrine? Uh, I don't know. It's got a wonderful icon on the map. I like that. <laughs> it's got a wibbly face going on. Already we're 12% of the way through. So I don't think the Merry Foothills are very big. But maybe they've got all sorts going on. Oh, there's the shrine. Okay. Interact with the shrine. Shrines are ancient statues crafted by goblins of ages past. The monolithic figures are strewn throughout the realm, each one imbued with the power to grant a chosen blessing upon your group. Okay, so we can have unprepared foes. Enemies at a surprise will start the battle at 60% life, or physical damage of the party is increased by 35%. Do you know what? Yeah, let's go for that. We don't get surprised people very often, I wouldn't imagine. So we'll just hit a lot harder, I think. And then we can either go to a smithy or go to a camp. I mean, we've not seen a smithy. So let's look at a smithy, shall we? Because we haven't seen that yet so far. So let's head over and see what that's all about. Oh, that tree has fallen down. We can't go back. It's a, an orc. Hello there, orc friend. Uh, base weapon. Oh, we can upgrade things. Uh, okay, so what if we upgrade a stool? It becomes a fine wooden stool. It becomes woodier. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, why not? Upgrade it. There we go. Yay, it's been upgraded. Did we just do the one thing? Was that free? Oh, no, we haven't got any money. Oh, we didn't bring any... Oh, upgrades last until the end of the adventure only. Oh, okay, that's a bit of a shame. <laughs> Can we do it with all of them, then? Not enough gold. Oh, Oh, I thought it was a cost to upgrade nothing. I didn't know. Oh, okay, right. Maybe we just wasted our money on that. But never mind. There you go. We've helped local business. Yay for local business. And now we have a bit of a fight ahead of us. Looking at the map, there's a fight and then a camp and a smithy or harvest and treasure and then a tough battle at the end. Uh, okay, let's get this one out of the way, look, because we sort of know what we're doing with this. So let's try and get through to the tough battle at the end, shall we? We've seen us fight wolves a few times. So we'll get through this. I'm sure it'll all be... Okay. Uh, right, foil rock is already quite badly hurt. But apart from that, it's all going to be fine. And then, um, yeah, we'll see what path we take. And then you yeah, have a look at the big fight at the very end of the woods. Right, we're at the point where we're going to have a big fight. There is something a little bit dubious just there, look. There is something right there behind the hill that I can't quite see. There is a wolf as well, but I don't know what that is. I think maybe is that something to do with the big fight? Or is that just a mushroom? Is that just nothing to worry about at all? I'm not quite sure. Uh, we did pick up some exciting stuff last time. We've picked up an orb of slog. 20% chance to slow. I mean, can we possibly equip that? It temporarily enchants a weapon. Let's put it on... Oh, uh, we'll put it on foil rockers because nobody else can have it. There you go, foil rocker. And we picked up a magic rock. So can that... Can that go to the, the shaman? I suppose it can. Okay, I possibly should have read what that did, but okay, I'm sure we'll find out in a bit. Right, let's head over here then. I think maybe that's just a mushroom in the background, and the fight is with... Oh, 
I see. Right, a couple of walls and a couple of spiders as well. Right, I get you. I see how it's going to be. Uh, right, okay. We've seen us do fighting before. So let's just try and just get through this, shall we? We'll just try and work our way through as best we can. And we'll come back if exciting things happen in the fight. But I think, yeah, we'll just sort of... Uh, yeah, we'll just sort of work our way through the baddies as it goes. You can defend. Oh, no! Foil Rock has died. For each death, you'll be awarded valuable souls at the end of the adventure. Souls can be used to upgrade the lair. Okay, so it's not a complete disaster if they die. But, of course, it's not great in this particular fight because now that sort of, you know, the odds are a little bit more in their favour, I would say, more than ours now. Also, all of our goblins have gone red. Oh, why is that? Fury. Oh, they're really angry that their friend has died. So their damage is increased by 50% until the next turn. Right, we have to attack. Everybody has to attack now. Everyone's furious. Nine points of damage. That's pretty good. Uh, you taking a bit of a knock. Oh, they just... This is really unfortunate. Okay, just run up and smack the spider. It's gone. Wow. Okay, that was fantastic. Well done. Um, you can you can run and just bash that thing because you're furious. That's got armor on annoyingly. Um, you can hex that thing. Just take it out. Just to get rid of it. So now it's just two enemy. Right, this is fine. We can take down the two. This is going to be okay. I think we're going to get to go next. Uh, we will potentially exterminate you. Although I don't think that'll kill you. And it will. It'll kill you. Okay. Boom! Down you go. There was fire there from a, I don't know, wooden stick. I don't know how that happens. But I'll take it. It's fine. You punchity punch. You're going to take some damage, but you've got shielding, so it's all fine. You're bleeding, though, which isn't great. Uh, right, we've got to get this done quickly. So you punch that thing. The wolf... Everybody's going to have a go before that. So this is going to be fine. So do you know what? Hex that thing. Basic attack. Boom. Down the baddie wolf goes. Okay. We shall harvest this thing, because we get some good stuff out of it. Um, and I think, yeah, sometimes when we take all, you can harvest it again. Yeah, look, you can do it twice. So we'll do that again. Yeah, that might just be a mushroom in the background. I thought it was like a monster was going to leap out at us, but no, it's not that. And what's in the bag? Just some gold. Just, you know, the wolves spending money for the weekend. And I think, is that it? Uh, oh, 64% of the way through. Oh, okay, right. We're not quite through yet. Oh, I see. I thought maybe that was going to take us through to the end. Oh, there's a tower thing. Um, okay. Exit. Do we climb up here and claim? Ah, we've put up a little banner. We've got a little kind of flag thing going on. And now we're pointing at something. Oh, okay. That's quite good. So now, yeah, we're scouted the level. We know what there is. We've done some treasure gathering and everything else. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Foil Rocker, RIP. But yeah, everyone else came back okay. And we've picked up some useful goodies. Wonderful. And a soul, of course. We've got Foil Rocker's soul. Can we do anything with that soul back at the base? Let's try and find out, shall we? Let's try and find out. Uh, construct a stairwell to reach the lower depths, followed by an empty chamber to further expand your lair. Okay, hang on. We're going to do something else first. So yeah, can we upgrade? Ah, I think we can. The heart of your lair. Upgrade it to unlock more rooms and delve deeper. I think the upgrade button is now lit up. So what, what do we need though? Next upgrade requires... Oh, five. Ah, five souls and 12 goblins. Okay, right. So we can't do that right now, but... Foil Rocker is the first soul we've got, whose soul will eventually be sort of you know, put into here and be part of the lair forever, which is wonderful. So yeah, they die in the mortal realm, but they become part of the goblin's legacy forevermore. I quite like that. There is somebody up there. Hello, who are you? A merchant. Hello, merchant. Can we chat to you? You look the happiest merchant. Oh, you are magnificent. Look at you. You are very good. Um, can we sell you some stuff? Can we just sell all this rubbish that we can't use? Because we've got no need for it. We just have big piles of gold, please. <laughs> Give us the shiny gold. Treasure can be safely sold for gold. Yeah, this is this is good. 689 gold coming our way. Get rid of the shiny things. Don't need the shiny things. Don't need junk. Get rid of all that, please. Um, okay, keep all the rest of the stuff. Can we buy anything from you? 
a large bone, we could buy another weapon, we could buy a long stick, we could buy a, mag a magical twig. <laughs> uh, how much is that? 800 money for a magic twig. I think we're okay. Do you know what? We'll have a massive pile of gold, please. Enjoy the shiny trinkets and loads of rubbish we gave you. We shall just have a huge pile of gold. There we go. Wonderful. Pleasure doing business with you, Orc friend. And you know what? With that done, I think we will wrap things up for now. With our little look at Goblin Stone, I think we've had a pretty good look at the game to see what it's all about and how it works and all that kind of stuff. And although we have done quite a lot, I would say, of the main stuff that you will see in the game, I bet there are a few bits and bobs that we haven't quite covered. We've not seen the whole sort of making the goblins do the whole sort of letter writing thing and then seeing how the whole genetics thing plays out. We've not kind of got to that point yet, but we did at least get to this point here where they've got the lair. They've got their little lair and we can build it up and add stairwells and new rooms and all that kind of stuff. Costs money to dig out new rooms by the look of it. And you can, you know, send them away on adventures. You can make weapons for them. We have to have storage to keep all our bits and bobs. We can do trading. And on the adventures as well, when they go out and about, they have little kind of paths to follow. So maybe if your people are a bit battered and bruised and there's a camp coming up, you can send them to a camp. If not, then maybe go down another route and go and gather some resources or whatever. There's quite a lot going on there is a lot going on and I feel like here we've got the basics done we've got the you know, very basics of the lair up and running which is wonderful which is very good and yeah we've been out on a few adventures but I bet there's some more stuff that we haven't happened across there's going to be many different types of goblin that we haven't seen I mean we've got what three or four different types I bet there's loads I bet there are so many more. So got all those to go and look at. And I bet there's different kind of encounters out there, different enemies to fight, different weapons. And I wonder if there's sort of crafting, if you start making your own sort of tools or weapons or whatever else. I bet there's a lot going on. I bet there is a lot. But yeah, I'm quite happy with how we did. I quite like it. I also do like the narration thing. It becomes a little bit tricky when you're trying to do a youtube -y recording for it because you, know, you sort of talk over the narrator quite a lot of the time because you don't know when they're going to pop up and start chatting. But I do like the fact that it is all sort of, you know, properly narrated. There's a proper sort of story going on. And yeah, there are characters in it. We met that orc out in the woods who was just sad that somebody they knew had passed away and they'd buried them and they were just sad and you know, they, they didn't do anything in the game so much. It was just an encounter that added a bit of story and I quite like that. It sort of feels like a, an exciting world and yeah, we are playing the goblins and we are being oppressed. We're the <laughs> help, help, we're being oppressed. We are you know, the, the sort of ones who are in trouble here and we're trying to fight back against the pesky adventurers and humans who keep killing us for experience points and gold and such like. So, Joe, yeah, it's really interesting. It's a very interesting game. I, yeah, it looks lovely as well. It looks very, very pretty. I like all the different designs, all the characters and the goblins and everything else. And, you know, it's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of detail in these rooms. And then when you're going through the different levels as well, it's really pretty. Some of them are just big long walks through a nice sort of pretty environment. You can look at all the lovely things in the background and the foreground. So yeah, it looks wonderful as well. It also sounds quite nice. You know, I have the music turned down quite a bit for the YouTube videos. But um, yeah, the music is quite nice as well in the background. So Joe, you know it's it's really good. It's a really lovely game. And I'm glad we took the time to go and have a look at it because it's a lot of fun. And yeah, we've barely scratched the surface. So I think the full game is going to have a lot going on. There's going to be an awful lot happening. I mean, yeah, we covered what a little bit down here there's all of that over there and all of that over there and potentially some more as well because they're still working on our kind of tree stump map so there is a lot happening there is a lot going on so uh, yes if you do decide to dive in and get the game then yeah i think it'll be quite a big sort of investment there'll be a lot to do in the game so there you go yeah if you're interested there's a link to the steam store page in the video description so you can go and take a look and wishlist it and all that kind of stuff if you would like to not out yet comes out on the 12th of march which is lovely so there we go i think we will wrap things up for now though hopefully you have enjoyed this if you have please do leave a like that would be most marvelous indeed and also if you're not already then please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other bits and bobs and nonsense that we get up to in the geek cupboard but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i'll see you next time we are going to be known as the keepers of the tea betty is very clever oh she's very clever it's betty it's the hat i think so let's injure you so oh okay or not <laughs> Fine, don't injure them then. It's a no from us right now, Robert. But you know what? Have this tea. Take this tea away with you. They've kind of died a bit. Okay. <laughs> Look at all of the tea we've got going on. This is wonderful.